this is the toes that are squashed all over the road. Size of a large common toad in the UK. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. A uh, few days in sort of southern Queensland is coming to an end. It's been just a haven for walking in nature, seeing beauty on the other side of the world, very different from the central coast, very different from the Blue Mountains. But come along in this video and let me just take you into the wonderful, lovely countryside and nature of Australia once again. I hope you enjoy it. One more bit to go on this trip and that's Sydney itself. I've got a herping trip planned with a really good guy. But guys, for now, just enjoy the beauty and wonder of nature in Australia. So when you see your house plants, like your Swiss cheese plants, at their full potential. It's quite amazing. Over here, we're just in the garden of where we are. Over here. Look at that, huge. Now we've got golden stem bamboo in our garden, but in a minute, I'll show you just how big the bamboo is. So on the wooden floor in the garden is Rather scantier everywhere. Something you'd get as a cheap house plant at home, beautiful as it is. So, look at this guy with its sort of giant aerial roots supporting it, as Jackie said. So, what is it? Well, I take one to school and it grows on my kitchen windowsill. We'd call it that's all over there. A rubber plant. Yeah, but look at those We're going plants. for those now. So there's your rubber plant that grows on the side in your <laughs> in your house back in the UK. Ficus, one of the species, of course, growing in a subtropical climate. So there's some bamboo. Nice little bamboo, like you have grown in your garden, if you like me. And then, this is how big giant bamboo actually grows. <laughs> as high as the rainforest canopy. Absolutely amazing. And my God, you have to touch it. So the whole place is dry. Everything's thirsty and wilting, desperate for some rain and smoke in the air. The smell of smoke from the forest fires locally. But look at this, you'd call this potus or devil's ivy. I grow it in nearly all of my reptile amphibian enclosures. And here it is again, reaching its full potential all the way up to the top of this tree. Look at that, absolutely amazing. And another plant that you'll have growing in your vivariums, probably. Again, just growing wild and free. Phenomenal, beautiful place. So the next door's property's got a huge garden. No plants, just lawn. Absolutely snake free. Ideal if you don't want to get bitten, I guess. But where we're staying, this is the garden. Overgrown full of plants, thick leaf litter, death adder heaven amongst everything else. But of course, for me, way better than a lawn. Tiny bit of water there in a the creek bed. What we're noticing here is much more butterfly life, real beauties, but not one of them will sit still. They've all got serious ADHD. 
to see three, four species just, just here alone. Hot and humid. Here we are, we're in the forest, just having a walk. Just a, a walk, you know, a man-made walk through the woods. It's the middle of the day, it's sweating humidity. Um, you saw a little couple of little skinks, but not a time of day where you'd expect to see anything much out. Although there's lace monitors here, It'd be nice to see one of those. No sun out today, and yet, I've just put my hand and lent on a couple of logs to turn them over, see what's under there. They're hot, everything's so hot at ground level. My goodness, you can really see how forest fires start and whip around. So really, really humid, really, really hot with no sunshine out at all. But a beautiful bit of forest. And again, it's all done out, man-made and so on and so forth. Lovely car parking, every toilets, all of that kind of thing. There's hardly anyone here. Once again, absolute peace and quiet. you guys know if you watch the vlogs we do lead quite busy lives like you do and everyone else does in the UK but something I've repeated on this Australia trip more than once is peaceful just peaceful surroundings very few people around it's seven o'clock in the morning we're having breakfast on the veranda beautiful property we've rented in an overgrown wildlife kind of garden backing onto the bush and the creek in Beerwa in Queensland and today we're driving 20 minutes to the Australia Zoo Steve Irwin's place but just just have a listen That is peaceful. So this guy's turned up for breakfast. He's obviously used to guests staying here and having breakfast. There's a brush turkey just scampering around under the house. And watching with a very keen eye, this guy having a free feed. Deciding whether to come down or not, backlit so you can't see him. He's a kookaburra. He's up there. He's there a lot. So this beauty here, he's a newbie. I've no idea what he is, but I shall tell you in a minute. 
<laughs> he's got a beady eye and he's a good looking guy. So to give you some idea, we're a metre away. Not even that now. But he has eaten all my... <laughs> he's blowing a nose. He has eaten all my scrambled egg. So you guys are now 18 inches away. You're now 12 inches away. In a minute, he's going to touch his beak. You're now six inches away. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, he's got a right hook beak. That's a, that is a bird with a very, very good beak. You've got any food you can put on your hand, Jackie? I think he'll come out and get it. Put it on my hand if you like. Maybe not. It's not that stupid. <coughs> Come on then. What a cracking little guy. You're a foot away from him, guys. He knows the score, doesn't he, around here? He's the size of a jackdaw, to give you some idea. And a lot of these birds here, like the Australian magpies, they look just like a corvid. They look just like part of the crow family, and yet yeah, they're not related at all. Convergent evolution. Oh. <laughs> Here he is. Wow, look at that. It's right next Same to the... Same with backlit, but look at that. So this guy's been waiting and waiting. He's killing that bit of bread. Hold your hand out, base, if you'll land on it. Well, that's a beast. <laughs> that's a beast. That beats the cockatoos you've been having too much of in that park. Cookaburra. There we go. There's a whole host of critters down here that know. How cool is that? <laughs> Get me in the air. <laughs> I'll try not to. Jackie's in her underwear. <laughs> Drop that bit. Too big for it, isn't it? That's Ooh. a lot bigger than a, a lot bigger than a jackdaw. Look at the size of its beak. Yeah. So we said it on a previous vlog, but these are a kingfisher. Oh, sorry. But rather than our little well, kingfishers yeah. and most kingfishers hunting around water, I think of them as a, as a kingfisher of lizards and invertebrates in the woodland. Instead of fishing things out of water, they're fishing stuff off the woodland floor. But a similar sit and wait lifestyle in the trees and just observing the leaf litter below. It was a messy eater there. Come on in. It's My finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pair of tongs. Yeah, it, did. it sounded like it. Didn't it? <laughs> Is he actually eating anything? I think they're like really disappointed the scrambled eggs gone. When they're getting veggie stuff. thinks a butcher bird definitely standing down uh, in lieu of the kookaburra here there's two butcher birds if you like meat so guys the beak of this bird is touching the phone lens listen <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> push my luck.
We've got a shingle back skink <laughs> in the UK. Anyone that keeps reptiles would give their, both their arms to keep this species. <laughs> Quite emotional. I like the lizards and the snakes. Are these your favourites, Jackie? Yeah, one of them and the koalas. The koalas. <laughs> well, in the same morning, you've patted a wild cockerbara and stroked a bay kangaroo, a tame kangaroo. I haven't got any food though. I'm here to see the Australian stuff, but you can't not say hi to a Komodo dragon, can you? Look at the size of that thing. Who ate the flowers? Hmm? really done any office work so far this holiday. I've replied to all the emails, but I've got to get in that diary now. I can't put it off any longer. So, I'm brush turkey for the perennial pet. Um, yes, and for this evening, this <laughs> will mostly be my office. So here's another Kato. The first night we've got here, it was a freak day, as in the temperature spiked to 35 degrees or something like that. It was really hot when we got here that first night and the road was covered in cane toads. Many squash ones that had been run over. Didn't do a lot of filming. Thought there'd be loads. It was a weird day. The rest of the temperature's been about 26. We've not seen one. We're doing a nighttime walk and here they are. So again, about as big as a common toad, but you can see those paratoid glands behind the eyes. Absolutely chock full of poison. but not huge, not like the ones we keep as pets that get ginormous, most of the ones we've seen, oh, I don't know, a huge common toad sort of size. Beautiful things, incredibly destructive to the Australian wildlife. If you didn't know, these are an invasive species imported here a long time ago to eat the cane beetle, the sugar cane beetle. They didn't really do a lot of good. They just ended up poisoning all the toad eating snakes and other wildlife that eat toads here that certainly don't have much immunity apart from one or two to their incredibly toxic skin. So this morning we're at a lovely local wetland reserve that borders a, a reservoir on a dam, <coughs> excuse me, and it's absolutely stunning. Look at this. Now we've already seen tadpoles and a lot of the water around here and on the central coast and probably Australia everywhere, there's little fish in there and they're either mosquito fish or wild guppies. So they're an introduced species probably to control a mosquito larva, um, but nothing that interesting from an Australian point of view. But have a look at this. red bellied black snakes and lovely big land mullets are today's target species. We did lay in too long for the snakes, but we'll see. Finally, a butterfly sitting still. Probably not for very long, so enjoy. This thing's all at least five inches across. It's a big, big butterfly. Beautiful, but really big. Beautiful. What a stunner. 
it's at least, it's, well, yeah, four to five inches across, definitely. Let me show you something truly beautiful, turning you around right now. So here's the main reservoir. It goes right, right up into the distance around the corner. It's certainly quite low. Absolute bird life heaven over there. We haven't got binoculars, we haven't got a long lens, but I should think if bird watching is your thing, just setting up camp here for an hour, you would see some beautiful stuff. Cormorants, little tiny grebes, huge white heron or white egret over there. Let me swap you around, see if we can see it. There's actually a couple of really big white herons. Skulking along there. A little tiny grebe. I'm just looking over here. I'm not sure if we've got an osprey over here. Coming in. And it's an osprey or brownie kite, I can't tell from here. Let's see if it gets any closer. I can only wonder what birds and animals live in these huge sedge beds. Six foot tall. Cookaburra food here, look. Mm, little skink. These plants are beautiful and they're really popular in the garden centres and these big flower spikes. Look at this. So they're actually really straight, quite light, but really, really rigid. And apparently a, a favourite for Aboriginal spears is our really long you know perfect they look soft and squishy but they're not they're really rigid they're really really nice Jackie's looking in a hole <laughs> Dozens and dozens of fruit bats are flying into the garden this evening again, feasting on the palm fruits in the bottom of the garden here. Obviously no good filming it on the phone, but to see the sky, a trail of fruit bats come in and landing from far away, actually landing where you're stopping, in the trees in the garden. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The only downside is they spend all night fighting. Sounds like cats scrapping in the trees. Not far from the bedroom window, which is open to keep the temperature down. <laughs> 